question here. Um, what are some of the most creative coaching niches that you've heard of? I have a couple of favorites. Uh, one was someone who worked with uh, high school students who are deaf and the specific challenges that the deaf community faces. Uh, another one was someone I was, uh, he was an executive. Uh, he's someone who uh, wanted to work with executives who uh, had high powered positions, but have had uh, some sort of heart event, something, some health event that has shaken them. Um, another one is someone, uh, she was uh, wanting to work with uh, women in their first uh, year in marriage. Uh, women uh, who are uh, in their first, uh, you know, women who are pregnant, you know, working towards that. Um, and one I heard recently was uh, someone who uh, was a coach uh, specifically for people who did not have children. I thought that was an interesting specialty. Um, I mean, you, it, it's, uh, I think a lot of times people take what's happening in there or, you know, what's in their life, which I did with, with education. I was like, you know, for me, I, I mean, I literally taught a dead language to teenagers, found coaching and thought this makes sense. And I was working with teens. So you put the two together. I think when people are looking for their specialty, it's asking yourself, what's unique to my experience that I could bring. And uh, I was uh, looking at some, uh, someone uh, recently, I was reading something about one of the, one of the keys to branding is figuring out what is your uh, unfair advantage. What's the thing that you bring that no one else can bring simply because of your experience? And that can sometimes be uh, not a key part, but at least a part of what you bring to your specialty as a coach. That's the, I think that's a really powerful way of looking at it. You know, so everyone has some sort of, um, yeah, unfair advantage. You gotta use it. Yeah. Really great examples there, John, got me thinking. Um, actually, when I first started out, um, the name of my program and coaching I was doing was Savvy Strategies for en Enlightened Entrepreneurs. There you go. And what I was focusing on was, we called it Conscious Prosperity. But what I was bringing to that was, I am highly spiritual, yet I am also, um, I can play in that yin and yang place, mm -hmm. can be very strategic mm -hmm. and corporate. So it was bringing that learning and um, running programs and group coaching around helping those entrepreneurs in terms of their money mindset and their thoughts around abundance and any fears that they had that if you are doing spiritual coaching, it might mean that you shouldn't charge. That was an ongoing common theme. Mm -mm -mm. I have more too. So other examples? Yeah. <laughs> They're so good. Um, oh, I just, it just flew out of my mind. I'll think of another one. Uh, but while, while you were talking, I was like, oh, I have a good one. Um, oh no, it's just slipping. Rush. <laughs> it was so good too. I was like, I, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. I'll share it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll oh, I got it. it. I got it back. It just came oh, back. Yes. There it is. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was people, it was, uh, uh, someone who wanted to work with executives who like to use bad words. Oh, okay. Brilliant. <laughs> That's so brilliant. That's so smart. I mean, it's not mine. I mean, I as a I as a high school teacher have avoided, you know, uh, bad language. But I mean, some people really like it, and it was in our, so in our programs. Like, you know, this is what I want to coach. And my goodness, talk about a specialty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because there's some there's some pirate mouths in the executive <laughs> world. Yeah, you know, I got vouch for that. <laughs> yeah, you meet them like what? Wow. Okay. All right, got to give this, uh, you know, my, my Latin teacher self is, ah, breathe, okay, we can do this. <laughs> I thought of you the other day, John, I can't remember who I was talking to. And I was like, you know, some of this language comes up in the coaching sessions or even the groups and things. And um, I know we talked about Tony Robbins once and you were like, oh, we sat down to watch it and Tony Robbins is a potty mouth. So, um, yeah, sometimes when I'm running these sessions, but I'm I'm a Brit, you know. We have some colourful language also, so 
sometimes in, in that world and i think that's something for coaches yeah. to think about isn't it like mm. i can match it i'm comfortable with that i would not submit a recording to the icf of course with that kind of coaching <laughs> i wonder what the i mean they have to have guidelines at the icf it's like okay this is you know this is one of those where it's like oh oh wow okay <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting or they have assessors like specific assessors like is this an e or not is this is this parental explicit content <laughs> Um, and I had another one that came to mind. Um, I almost said afterlife coaching, end mm. of life coaching, of course, unless you believe in something, mm. I mean, afterlife coaching would not work, but end of life coaching, somebody I work with, and that was fascinating. I was mentoring them. I have an idea of, a, of this is a, I, no one has done this, but this is a theoretical one. It would be uh, people. Uh, a life coach who specializes in coaching people when they're waking up. I think that'd be amazing. Like, especially if a coach lived in Europe or someplace, you know, ahead of the U.S. or like, let's say they lived in, you know, Middle East and they want to coach someone, you know, time zones behind them or, you know, something, you know. Yeah. You live in South Africa or, or some, uh, you live in Africa and, you know, coach someone in the U.S. I think it'd be great. Because you'd be like, oh, you know, you're five hours or eight hours ahead or whatever. That'd be fun. What do you mean? Just as they're waking up? This is yeah, you call them. It's like your wake up call. How are you? <laughs> like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we're here with your coach right away. What's up? You're clearly a morning person then, John. Well, I think it'd be, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. Like it seems silly, but I think what's going to happen in the field and part of it is silly. Like I, it, it's an idea for a life coaching sketch that we put together. It was, it's silliness. However, there is an element of, uh, you know, I think, you know, fast forward 10, 20 years from now, there's going to be instances where coaching, like in real time, in re, you know, coaching on demand in real time, like there's going to be a place for it where, you know, so I didn't want to sit down and, and do this two hours of work, but it's hard. I'm having a hard time, like getting my mind in there, call a coach, or call your coach or, you know, something where, uh, you know, this idea of, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to muscle the, you know, muscle through it, be a lone ranger. Like, you know, like it's somehow not a test of your worth as a human being. Asking for help is a sign of strength. And so many people in the coaching world, I mean, myself included, feel like, no, no, just lift it myself. I can do it. Like, look at me, like how strong I am, like blah, blah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Asking for help. I mean, I think there's a, there is definitely a, a skill to asking for help. Like I feel, I feel like asking for help is not, it's not like a, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to ask everyone for everything. I feel like there's a very strategic asks and you got to do your work before they ask, you know, do your work during the ask and do it after like follow up after. Um, I mean, I, I feel like there's a way that we can engage with coaches in these different areas of our lives that can move us forward. Actually, I've decided I absolutely love that idea. As you've been talking and I've been thinking about it, I'm like, well, I set intentions in the morning. I don't mm -hmm. go on my phone. I practice gratitude. I set intentions. I think about three goals of the day. And uh, there are days when I'm like, I don't know. I don't feel motivated. And I, I could do with that, actually. I know. What if you had a coaching session? Like, you know, let's say a coaching session at six in the morning. You know, wake up, do your morning routine, knowing that you're going to be meeting with your coach in 30 minutes. Like, it's a structure. All of this stuff, like coaches, like, like use coaches and coaching as structures like, for you to live your best life. And it's all designed. You know, you can design this way ahead of time and say, this is what I want. But yeah, I, I'm just waiting for a coach to do that. Say, you know what? I specialize in coaching people in the morning. Amazing. And that would be great in the exec world. I actually have a lot of exec clients similar to this, that they do have their coaching at 6.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. 7 in the morning before, and it, it just sets the tone for the day, it up, doesn't it? Sets it up. Yeah, and it's amazing. I feel like you know there are periods of time when I have a coach and don't have a coach, and uh, when in those periods of transition, I'm a, an odd client to have as a coach. Like it's, or as, you know, <laughs> it's just it's a weird world it's a weird world uh 
And it's also, uh, you know, when I, in those places, like I realize what it does, it just speeds up your processing speed. It's, it allows me and uh, me other people to process your life more quickly so that you can make faster, more empowered decisions. And then so much of our life now, like so much of the work of our life is, is making decisions, decision-making work. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's no longer, uh, you know, just muscle work. It's more like you know, deciding what to do is as important as uh, getting it done. So, yeah, this is where I think coaching is really the the newest field that helps us as human beings flourish in a world that gets increasing, like with increasing decisions, you know, op with increasing options.